Hello. Good afternoon, everyone. Today, I want to speak about how we can train mosquitoes to drink veggie food instead of blood. Sounds strange, isn't it? My story starts from the time I was three years old girl and I playing in the garden of my parents' house in Iran and Tehran. I found a world of wonder there, a world of insects. I really like them. And I really find everything depends on their behaviors, depends on the sounds. It's very interesting for me. Um, but it's not very interesting for my parents because my parents every day had a lot of claims from the neighbors and also the friends. I scared their children. But actually, I don't want to scare them. I just want to show them how much this world is fascinating, how much these creatures are interesting, depends on behaviors. They are like outlanders in our world. My interest to mosquitoes continued until I go to my schools, undergraduations in mathematics and medicine. And then after I reached my postgraduate studies, one of them was medical entomology. And I had a project I sent to southeastern part of Iran, borderline of Iran and Afghanistan. 2006, beginning of the war, I saw a lot of deaths. Not because of war, it's because of vector-borne diseases, mosquito-borne diseases, like malaria. In that moment, I understand these lovely creatures had another aspect on our life. They can kill people, collapse economy. So what I did, I decided to come to UK and study more about vector-borne diseases, mosquito-borne diseases. I focus on malaria. I learned a lot about infection biology, epidemiology, and bioinformatics. When I become an independent researcher and I could have my own hypothesis and questions, I just would like to go for a specific question. But before I reach to that, I will tell you something. As a human being, we are only one species, Homo sapiens. But there is more than 4,000 species of mosquitoes. And only 2% of them can transmit diseases. And these 2%, they are male and female. During 120 years of fantastic research on mosquito-borne diseases, all the scientists focus on female mosquito. OK, why? Because the field is dominated by male researcher. Male researcher, research on female. I'm a female researcher. Then I would like to go for male. I would like to understand what male mosquitoes do. <laughs> OK? They do very interesting. Their life is very short, it's one week. They come out, they search for plant sugar, they eat a lot of sugar because they want to fly and after that they would like to do it something else. They would like to mate and have sex. And they like to make a big groups in sunset and sunrise based on the species they have. And then they gather a big group of males and then when they are start in high speed dancing, the females go to this crew and find the best mate. Yes, of course, the females still have a, basically the chance to select the best. The females select the best mate. They have mating. And basically, uh, females is get pregnant and fly. And for nourishing their babies, they are going to, the, um, to find humans and other animals to get blood, to nourish their babies. During that moment, I just thinking, is there any language between male to male mosquitoes? Is it a language of a smoke or small molecules in the air? How these basically mosquitoes, small males, they collect each other. They call, OK, guys, we meet each other in that location and we dance together and have sex. And, and how they do that? <laughs> because of that, I just try to understand that it's not unusual. Very long time ago, we speak by each other by the smoke as well. You know, we just basically use the smoke to say the enemy is around and we make each other ready for everything. And I just basically collect the smells uh, of the dance. I put the 50 mosquitoes in the jar and I collect the smell. 
from that. And then I make a perfume of it. And then after that, I try this perfume in the lab and also I go to Africa and I say, yes, I can attract the male mosquitoes to dance for me and have sex. And then have a fantastic life, just sugary food and have sex. Okay, but who is the best hunter? The next question is, who is the best hunter? Do you think leopard or lion? No, actually, because leopard and lion, they need at least more than 60 seconds to hunt. And we know less than 25 people kill per year by the, for example, attack of a lion. And lion is a king of jungle. But we have another female hunter, and she is less than 60 seconds. They can hunt, and we know more than 700 deaths per year from the bite of the mosquitoes and from the attack of the mosquitoes. And even when she get the bait and she fly away, eat it up, then we understand, okay, we eat it up. But I want to tell you here something very interesting. It's actually it's not a bite killing us. During this bite, mosquitoes transfer a lot of pathogens to us, like viruses and parasites, like malaria. But these little creatures come to our body not because they are nasty. No, they would like to survive. Parasites need host, need to be from in the patient's body. When this patient is near to die, need to transmit to another body. Then I ask the questions, is there any language between a parasite and the mosquitoes as well, a, con a language of the communications? Guys, I'm not Dr. Dolittle to kind of speak with the animals, but I really like to speak with mosquitoes. I really like to speak with them, and it's my aim. I started just thinking, is there any language between the parasite and the mosquito? And for doing this, I just thinking about Darwin's sentence, all creation on world, they do everything to survive. Parasites want to survive, then in some moments, when the patient is near to die, need to transmit from this body to another health, healthy body. During that stage, parasite is producing a lot of small molecules in our body. And one of these molecules is getting a lot during the transmission stage of the parasite, and we call it HMBPP. I get this molecule, add it to the blood, healthy blood, and offer it to mosquitoes. And in the lab, I saw a lot of them getting greedy to eat. The female mosquitoes want to eat more and more. In that moment, basically, I have a molecule basically make to make, uh, it makes mosquitoes to eat more. And we can say, parasites say, hashtag HMBPP when they want to transmit, because the name of this molecule is HMBPP. And that is a language of transmission for the mosquitoes, uh, for the parasite to transmit. Malaria parasite during the history killed a lot of humans, more than any armies. And also Hannibal lost his uh, wife and son due to malaria. Also one of his sites, one of the site of one of his eyes. Okay. Now we have two things. We have um, something to attract the mosquitoes, and this is a language of mosquito to mosquitoes, and we have something to make mosquitoes to eat more. It's a language of a signal of parasite to mosquitoes for eating. I will tell you a short history. Before 1939, most of the vector control strategies, it means that for the mosquito control is based on uh, environmental management. What, what is that? It means drying marshes, make dry wetlands. But after 1939, during the Second World War, a lot of deaths happened during the mosquito-borne diseases. So what we did, we, we have a lot of research, and we did a lot of research, and a lot of nice things, um, works have been done. But one of the discoveries in 1939 was DDT, it's a pesticide. These pesticides help a lot of lives during the war and after it. A lot of basically elimination of diseases happening because of the DDT. But what is the happening now? We, we know pesticides are not good for our natures. A lot of countries, they ban them because they are toxic, they are toxic and they destroy our environment. And also mosquito is getting resistant to uh, pesticides. It, what does it mean? It means if we have them, we have a lot of toxin, but still mosquitoes don't die. As Albert Einstein said, everything should be made as simple as possible, but not simpler. We have attractions and we have something to make the mosquitoes to eat more. I add both of them to beetroot juice, pinkish. Why? Because I would like it still to see the shine of the pinkish for, through the belly of the mosquitoes. Then I add that a trace of toxin in it, and I offer the mosquitoes to eat. 
And after 100 to 350 minutes, I can kill them. Less than six hours, I can kill one of the deadliest or five deadliest vector mosquitoes. And that was interesting, very interesting for me in terms of I found a pink cocktail for global health. I hope we can use it as a trap or we can use it for some methods to boost the health for a human being. What's going to be next for me? I like still to communicate with insects and I just continue that. Maybe this time I go for ticks, tick-borne diseases. But still I continue to um, work on the language of signals between mosquito to mosquito and also between mosquito to other pathogens. For confirming to you this HMBP is a language of eating, I added to the solution is blue color. Do you see the blue mosquitoes flying around? It's quite unusual. But now I show you we have basically blue mosquitoes. And I add HMBP in this solution and they eat and eat. During the recording of this movie, I found out actually this um, creature has a signature of crown, black crown, naturally stamped on her body. Look at that. I think she deserves a title, royal title. Don't you think? Thank you very much for your attention. <laughs>